this video, let us briefly review a lot of the network concepts we have discussed so far, so that we are in shape to look at more advanced topics as we move on. Okay, so let us have a quick recap of what we did in the previous class in terms of the different parameters. Quickly, let us look at which parameters correspond to nodes and which parameters correspond to edges and which corresp uh, parameters correspond to the entire network. So, density would be a network property, degree is a node property, you can think of average degree as being a network property. Uh, shortest path is basically for any pair of nodes and so on, diameter is a network property, characteristic path length is a network property, degree distribution is a network property, clustering coefficient is a node property, but, but you can also average it across the entire network or you can also average it across nodes which have a particular degree, right. So, you typically look at a plot of C k versus k. So, C of k is the clustering coefficient of all nodes with degree k versus the degree k itself. It is like n k versus k is your degree distribution, C k versus k is something that you may want to check for different kinds of networks. We will look at it a little later today. Uh, closeness centrality is a node property as is betweenness centrality, edge betweenness as the name sounds is a is an edge property um, and of course, yeah connected components and so on. So, we, we have several different properties to study a, a node in a network as well as several global characteristics of networks themselves. There are many more interesting centrality measures, we will try to you know do them in the lab session rather than just look at all the definitions and so on. For example, there is page rank and, and maybe briefly just uh, uh, take a look at another interesting property. So, we did look at several centrality measures. right and these centrality measures could be local or global in some sense right so is degree a local property yes what about between a centrality it's somewhat more than local because it looks at all the nodes in the network in some sense right so the between a centrality of one node is very dependent on the between the centrality of other nodes in the network. Whereas, degree yes to some extent of course, it uh, if a node has degree x it has to connect to x other nodes, but in some sense between the centrality is more of a global measure of what is happening right. So, the other useful things to think about are what is the what is the one neighborhood of a node or what is the two neighborhood, three neighborhood and so on. What is this? One neighborhood is the list of all neighbors of a node, two is neighbors plus neighbors of neighbors, three is neighbors plus neighbors of neighbors plus neighbors of neighbors of neighbors, right. So, so typically in biological networks you will see that in 4 hops you might be able to traverse like practically all of the network or something like that at least in uh, pro many protein interaction networks and so on. So, these are other properties right what nodes are present in your neighborhood. Another very useful property is let us look at a concept and I will come back to the property in a moment. What is a random walk? Right. Let us start with a graph. Right. And you could basically start somewhere on this graph, maybe let us say you start here, right. And what happens when you do a random walk? You pick a random edge to walk through. So, let us say you take this edge, you walk through this edge, you now reach here. After this, you can either go back or go here, then reach here, then maybe come back here, uh, we go here, come back here, go here, go here, go here, 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 
and so on, right. You can basically just meander along the network, walk to different points, different nodes on the network, right. So, which part of the network will you, uh, so how does the profile of nodes that you visit change depending upon where you are, right. You will see that if you start at this node, you are very likely to visit these nodes. Whereas, if you start at this node, you are very more likely to visit these nodes or even these nodes, right. So, depending upon where you start on the network, you will end up exploring a different bunch of nodes. Does that make sense? And let us say, suppose you had even probabilities, let us say you know you had a 0.8 uh, probability of taking this edge versus a 0 0.05 probability of taking this edge and so on, right. So, you will find that if you start here, you are very likely going to be here in the next iteration. Right? So, this is a plain random walk, there is this notion of random walk with restart. So, you now define an alpha value, let us say alpha equals 0 0.3, right, which means that with 0.3 probability, you will restart your random work. Let us say you are exploring the same graph that we looked at and you started at this point, right. You will explore, so you may, be you may first visit this, then you may come back here and so on or let us just uh, take a fresh grab for a moment. Okay, so, let us take another graph. And let us say we start exploring this graph from this point onwards, right. So, now with arbitrary probability you might end up here, right, then you might end up here, then you might end up here, but by this time because your alpha is 0 0.3 there is a very good chance that you might, so at every point you restart with a probability of 0 0.3, right, which means on average you will be restarting every 3 steps. You take 3 steps, you would have restarted. Restart from the initial point. So, the idea is I want to get an I uh, get a feel for the neighborhood around me, right. So, we do that for uh, this is one way of looking at the neighborhood around me, right. But this just tells you a long list of what are all the neighbors that I have. It does not tell you which neighbor is more important or which neighbor I am more likely to be at and so on. Even if you had an unweighted graph, you will see that in this graph you will find that you are very likely to be here because if you start here, you might go here, you might reach here, you might go here, you might reach here, you might go here, you might reach here. There are so many ways to reach this node. So, what you want to actually measure is let us say you have a node A and you have its neighbors or not even the neighbors, the list of all nodes in the graph, right. So, with what probability do you arrive at each of the other nodes or how many times? do you arrive at each of those nodes. So, after any number of steps, let us say 100 steps, hopefully it would have averaged out by then, right. So, you essentially co compute the stationary probability of visiting the neighbors. So, maybe for this node you might find something like 0 0.6, 0 0.2, 0 0.05, 0 whatever, it should all add up to 1, right. There is something else let us say with another. 0 0.05 somewhere, right. So, this means that B is in my neighborhood of in the neighborhood of A and is also particularly important, right. 
So, this gives you some sort of quantification of the neighborhood in, 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 sense, in a sense another way to quantify your neighborhood because one neighborhood two neighborhood are basically you know some unweighted uh, neighborhood maps. Here this tells you that oh, a particular node is more important than another node in the neighborhood. Yes, so you just have to run simulations right you, you basically start a random walker on right you start a random walker on whichever node you want to measure let us say A let us say this let us assume this is A and you want to now find do a random walk with restart. So, you start a random walker on A at A and you allow it to explore the graph right and you compute the number of times it visits B number of times it visits C and so on in one iteration you do it for 1000 iterations and average over it it would have hopefully converged. So, it basically you know uh, uh, uniform probability. So, if uh, this graph is unweighted and you have let us say this is your node that you are starting off and all these three edges will have equal probability. So, once you will take this or the other time you will take this. So, if you do it three times you would have likely visited each of these ones or rather if you do it 30 times you would have likely visited each of these around 9 to 11 times right something like that that is what a random network is that is what a random walk would give you on one of these graphs. In fact, Google's page rank is intimated is intimately connected to this kind of a metric and it again measures the stationary probability of visiting a web page or something like that it is a centrality measure that essentially relies on this concept of you know some, some sort of weighted importance to different nodes in a graph right. So, now given that these are all the we are now familiar with all the network parameters the next thing to look at is the network topologies basically random small world and power law networks. So, in today's video we covered we reviewed several network concepts and in the next video we will start looking at the concept of network models and start with a very interesting model of networks which was proposed way back in the 19 in 1960s by Erdős and Rainey.